1975, went to Hong Kong. They were farmers, they were fishermen, they were hard rock miners and paper makers, and they were tough guys. They were given an impossible mission. The men of the Canadian Sea Force sent to Hong Kong in 1941. Consisting of the Winnipeg Grenadiers and the Royal Rifles, they were there to signal the Japanese that Britain was serious about defending this outpost of empire. Yet even as the Canadians arrived, the British had accepted the colony could not be held. It was just one of the mistakes that happens in war all the time. It was on the morning of December the 8th, 1941, with little warning the Japanese struck. The aircraft smashed the local airfield. Artillery hammered the defending troops, and the crack battle-hardened Japanese 38th Division swept down from the China mainland. The Japanese were sneaking up on us. One got me with a bayonet, if you want to see the scar through the leg. What happened to the guy who bayoneted you? Oh, he's got a stomach full of lead from my Tommy gun. Despite their heroic effort, the exhausted Canadians were pushed back to make a last stand on Hong Kong Island. I think the worst moment was after the Battle of Stanley Village. We lost about 80% of my company. And I knew that tomorrow or the next day would be the end. Then, after 18 bloody days of bitter fighting, on Christmas Day at 6 in the evening, the colony surrendered. I fire! 290 Canadians had died and over 500 were wounded. It was a huge sacrifice, and even the Japanese asked, why were the Canadians in Hong Kong? To find Canadians defending Hong Kong came as a surprise to them. And I might say a very unwelcome surprise. You got to mention dispatches as one notch below a military cross. What'd you get it for? I was uh, appointed uh, platoon commander for the Battle of Stanley Village. And I was surrounded by some wonderful soldiers who achieved their objective. And I was the one who was credited with it. But for the living, the ordeal of war was to be replaced by the hell of the Japanese prison camps. And we expected to be treated under the rules of the Geneva Convention. And the interpreter promptly said, Japan doesn't recognize the Geneva Convention. Yes, I was beaten on several occasions. I lied about one of my soldiers who stole a can of salmon. I said that he found it. And so we got a terrible beating. He had two guards hold me while he knocked me unconscious. It was bad enough that I nearly died with a kidney infection. We were all suffering malnutrition. The rice with the worms in it and all the crapping, the floor, the floor sweepings for the rice and things like that. What did you weigh when you war started? What was your weight? 185 pounds. And when you were released? <laughs> About 65 pounds. There was a deliberate and ongoing policy of starvation. And slowly but surely, the Canadian prisoners of war were starved to death. We lost as many Canadians in prisoner of war camp as we did fighting them. Sometime, uh, you'd, you'd hear the last post being played five or six times a day. Of the almost 2,000 Canadians who went to Hong Kong, 550 never returned. But the important thing was that we won the war. That's what we enlisted to do and that's what we did.